Did you ever wonder what would happen if Tanjiro had Yorichi's potential in Episode 1? Will he be able to quickly unlock and easily master the Hinokami Kagura? Or will he be able to quickly master the sun breathing techniques? How will the events turn out during all his demon encounters? Or his encounter with Muzan? Or his 12 Kizuki? Well, here are three interesting scenarios I found that support and help transpire the events of the story. But before all that, we need to talk about Yorichi. So Yorichi is a legendary demon slayer who lived during the Sengoku period. He was born with a strange birthmark on his forehead, which soon came to be known as the Demon Slayer Mark, which grants tremendous physical abilities, granted by its effects, all throughout his lifespan. He's known as one of the strongest and most powerful Demon Slayers in history, and the creator of the original breathing styles, particularly the Sun Breathing Technique, which is the foundation of all the breathing styles. His mere intimidating presence alone had struck deep fear into the heart of Muzan Kibutsuji, the progenitor of all demons and even mentioning his name would cause all demons to share the same fear that their master Muzan had. Yorichi lived for 85 years and spent his lifetime killing demons and hunting down Muzan, who he nearly killed during their first encounter, until his death due to old age while fighting his twin brother Michikatsu Tsugikuni, who was transformed by Muzan and now known as the demon Kokushibo. Now in the first scenario, Tanjiro with Yorichi's potential can effortlessly take on lesser demons with little to no effort even without a sword, or even give Giyu Tomioka a water Hashira a hard time subduing Tanjiro during their first encounter, while the latter defended a transformed Nezuko in the original story where Giyu moves in to strike Nezuko and Tanjiro moves toward him to save her but quickly gets subdued, not long before throwing a stone at Giyu as a distraction and at the same time threw an axe in the air which nearly hit Giyu's head. In this alternate version, however, with Yorichi's potential, this encounter takes a dramatic turn. As Giyu moves to strike Nezuko, Tanjiro, channeling a latent power, instinctively adopts a combat stance. His movements are fluid, precise, and eerily reminiscent of Yorichi. Giyu, a seasoned Hashira, is taken aback by the boy's innate skill and the intensity of his aura. But despite his shock, Giyu's experience allows him to finally subdue Tanjiro, but not without a struggle that makes him reconsider his initial assessment of the boy. Recognizing the untapped potential within Tanjiro, Giyu decides to bring him to Sakonji Urokodaki, a former water Hashira, sensing that the boy's latent abilities could be honed into something extraordinary. Now, this is just one of the three scenarios of the story that could transpire if Tanjiro had Yorichi's potential in the first episode. In the second scenario, Urokodaki's water breathing training and the final selection arc would take an entirely different turn. Tanjiro, with Yorichi's potential, could finish his first training with water breathing techniques with little to no effort while simultaneously unlocking Hinokami Kagura and tapping the potential power of sun breathing. He can also, with little to no effort, pass the final selection trial all alone, without any help needed. Upon his first meeting with Urokudaki, Tanjiro's training regimen begins. Unlike the original story, where Tanjiro struggles to master the basics, his natural affinity for combat becomes apparent almost immediately. Urokudaki, a former water Hashira, recognizes the unparalleled prowess in Tanjiro's movements. He intensifies the training, pushing Tanjiro to his limits, knowing that the boy's potential could make a significant difference in the fight against demons. During his intense training under Urokodaki, Tanjiro soon realizes his father's traditional dance, known as Hinokami Kagura, is a form of breathing technique. Just three months after his physical training, he sets aside the water breathing to fully master Hinokami Kagura, prompting Urokodaki to intensify the training even harder based on Tanjiro's new breathing technique. So during those times, Tanjiro shows a staggering and significant phase of growth of his abilities and combat prowess to the point of near Hashira level. And within a span of another three months, he was mandatorily tasked by Urokodaki to complete the final test of slicing the boulder effortlessly. Deep down, Urokodaki knows that he's training a beast among men that is Tanjiro. In a moment of tranquility, Tanjiro once again taps into his subconsciousness while feeling the air in his lungs and his aura suddenly burn brighter like the sun. And before Urokodaki could turn and walk away, Tanjiro not only splits the boulder in half, but shatters the two halves into rubble, which is the single strike with sheer force. As he does so, however, two shadowy figures appear behind the mountain fog filled with the wide smile and tears of hope and joy in their eyes. Urokodaki is thrilled, but before Tanjiro can say anything about the shadows, he informs him that he could attend the final selection earlier. Wasting no time, Tanjiro agrees to travel to Mount Fujikasane and enter the final selection all alone. There, he maps the mountain, one-shotting every demon on his way while crossing the mountain at an astonishing pace, until he ends up running into the hand demon. The demon immediately recognizes the fox mask worn by Tanjiro and attacks him without second thought. However, Tanjiro starts easily cutting through the demon like a hot knife through butter, prompting the demon to strategize. As the demon tries to regenerate, his wounds burn and slow down the healing. 
The demon moves his eyes to look over at Tanjiro, however he vanishes in a blink, and before the demon could even realize it, his head starts to fall to the ground. Tanjiro, who's once again thrown into a trance-like state, snaps out of it and realizes he's already killed the demon. After successfully passing the final selection, Tanjiro is given his Nichirin sword. The blade, instead of turning black as in the original story, gleams a bright red, symbolizing his connection to sun breathing and Yorichi's legacy. This unusual phenomenon catches the attention of the higher ups within the Demon Slayer core, particularly the Hashira. Tanjiro's first mission takes him to a town plagued by a demon. With Nezuko by his side, now viewed not only as a demon but as a potential ally, Tanjiro approaches the mission with a maturity and skill far beyond his years. His battle against the swamp demon demonstrates his strategic mind and combat prowess. He dispatches the demon with precision, drawing the attention of the Hashira who begin to see him as a potential successor to their ranks. The story then takes a pivotal turn, when Tanjiro encounters Muzan Kibutsuji in Asakusa. In the original timeline, this meeting is brief and tense, with Tanjiro barely able to contain his rage. This time, Tanjiro's presence is far more imposing. Muzan, sensing a threat reminiscent of Yorichi, becomes fearful. The encounter is charged with an unspoken recognition, and Muzan quickly retreats, understanding that this boy could be a significant threat to his reign. Tanjiro's journey to seek a cure for Nezuko and eliminate demons like Kyogai, the drum demon, brings him to meet allies like Zenitsu Akatsuma and Inosuke Hashibira. With his heightened abilities, Tanjiro naturally assumes a leadership role. His combat prowess inspires his companions, pushing them to become stronger. As they journey to Mount Natagumo, the battle against the spider family takes on a different tone. Tanjiro leads the charge, coordinating his comrades with precision. Against Rui, the fifth lower moon demon, Tanjiro easily taps into the Hinokami Kagura, a form of sun breathing, with an instinctual ease that shocks the lower moon demon. The sun breathing was so strong that Rui couldn't regenerate due to his wounds burning. Rui, who had underestimated Tanjiro, finds himself overpowered, and with the help of Nezuko, they manage to effortlessly kill Rui, before the arrival of the Hashira and reinforcements. His fight against the father spider demon and Rui showcases his mastery of both water and sun breathing, eliminating threats with a fluidity that leaves even the seasoned Hashira in awe. Recognizing his exceptional potential and mastery of the sun breathing, the Hashiras propose that he should undergo Hashira training. Here, he learns to enhance his techniques and refine his abilities even further. His interactions with the Hashira are characterized by mutual respect. Months after undergoing Hashira training, Tanjiro, who has now grown and has fully mastered the sun breathing, sets out to prepare for their final confrontation with Muzan and the remaining Upper Moon Demons. Which brings us to the third scenario, which culminates in the final battle in the Infinity Fortress. Tanjiro, now on par with Yorichi himself, vows to defeat Muzan once and for all, and end the long era of demons. His mastery of the sun breathing combined with his strategic acumen and unyielding spirit makes him a beacon of hope. The battles within the Infinity Castle are fierce, but Tanjiro's leadership and combat prowess turn the tide. Unlike the original story, where several Hashira and many Demon Slayers were killed during the battle, this scenario, however, allows Tanjiro to utilize effective strategies to reduce as many casualties as possible. His confrontation with the Upper Moon, such as Akaza, takes a different and decisive turn, and with the help of Gyu and Rengoku, they were able to finally defeat him with ease, which allows them to help out the other Demon Slayers and Hashira who were in battle. The final showdown with Muzan is an epic confrontation. Tanjiro, channeling the spirit of Yorichi and utilizing the mastered sun breathing, confronts the Demon King with a determination that would define the fate of the world. This version of Tanjiro, with Yorichi's potential, could stand as a testament to the unyielding spirit of the Demon Slayer core and the enduring legacy of the warriors who came before him. To be honest, an individual like Tanjiro with the potential of the strongest Demon Slayer could face many challenging trials and accomplish impossible feats as time goes on. That individual would forever carry that legacy to the current era. Speaking of the current era, what would happen if the strongest demon slayer lived in the same era as Tanjiro? Well, that's the subject of another video. In the meantime, click on this one to see another cool anime video. Go ahead, click it.